In this video, I'm going to share with you an alternative way of making zines that give you more options uh, to fit your gaming needs. So let's get into this. Welcome to Solitary RPG. If you have been a subscriber to the channel for a while, you know I'm into bookbinding. I really enjoy it. However, uh, zines are one of those things uh, I don't really make a lot of because I don't have, first of all, the, the long stapler to make the zines. And not all PDFs are created equally for making zines. Sometimes the print font is just a little too small for my taste. And when you do the two pages or two prints on each page, and you fold everything in half, the font's just a little too small. And sometimes the thickness of the zine, the number of pages in the zine, uh, make it just too much to staple and all that kind of stuff. So I've been messing around over the years, and I've come up with a few alternatives, but I think I finally have settled on a process for making zines that really works for me. And this process is actually really achievable by anybody that might be interested in making their own zines. So what I got here is a few different examples of very thin zines or pamphlets. Like this is the new uh, Vason solo rules for from Free League. It's only 12 pages and I made this nice little book kind of format for this and it turned out really nice. I also have this Fisk Borg, which this uh, zine actually, if you buy it printed, I've read comments about the text being too close to the gutter. So we were able to address that, fix that, and print it. And now I have a nice copy of Fisk Borg for my collection. And then we have Solitary Depths, which is another great example of a zine that is fun to make by um, with this new technique that I'm talking about and splatter shack which was the first one I did in this new format and I really like the way it turned out and that's what got me doing all the rest so what do we need to do this um, basically you're gonna want to have a stapler of some sort so this is my standard desk stapler uh, it's probably from the 60s or 70s. I bought it at an antique shop because I really like the design of it. But you need some sort of a regular stapler. So that way you can staple down the pages. And if you're going to do a thick zine, like Fisk Borg is a pretty thick zine, I went out and bought a heavy-duty stapler. Uh, this one can actually do up to 100 pages. And this is important because I plan to do some some kind of books, like an, an alternative way of binding books in the future. And I might need to do 100 pages. They do also make staplers that will staple up to 200 pages. I thought that was getting a little carried away for my taste. But I think 100 pages, this one kind of is the catch-all kind of stapler. It can also go down to 20 pages. And the way this kind of a stapler works is you're basically changing out the type of staples you use for the page count that you have. And it's just a good universal stapler. Got this on Amazon. It was like 20 bucks and it came with uh, two types of staples. One, a, a box of staples for 50 pages and a box of staples for 100 pages. So I thought it was a good investment. Then you're gonna need some way of cutting the text. Uh, if you can, if you have a, a paper cutter like I have, it's really simple. If not, you're either going to want to use a ruler to with a razor blade to cut the pages, or you're going to want to pre-cut the pages with a pair of scissors um, before you uh, put the book together. Uh, I guess it's just really going to depend on what you're binding and what you're trying to create. One of the advantages for this process of making zines is you have a little bit more control. Actually, you have 100% control on how big you want to make your pages. I made this one larger because I had the opportunity to do so. And it was a great, it's a great little book, first of all. 
um, but I wanted it to be a little bit larger, so I printed it at a larger size. Uh, Bisque Borg I made at 100%. This is what the size that the PDF was supposed to be, and that's how I printed it. So you can actually look at your zine. You can print a sample page out. You can see how big the pages are, see if the text works for you. I'm much older, uh, and my eyes don't always work as good, and I want to uh, play without having to use my glasses sometimes. So I, I might want to print the text bigger. Uh, your choice uh, may vary. It is up to you. I just think it's a, a good way of giving you some customization in printing your zines. You can also add pages. So let's say I wanted to add blank pages in here for taking notes. I could have done that when I was putting the book together. If there's an oracle or if there's some sort of a chart table or additional information I want to add while I'm making the zine, I can put those pages in and staple it together. So it does provide some customization. What we're going to do in this video is I recorded the making of this uh, zine. And it'll go through all the steps and processes so that you can try it yourself. It's a very simple and easy process and I had a lot of fun and it gives me a lot of flexibility uh, when creating my zines. So let's get into the video. The zine that we're going to bind is Fisk Borg, which is really a cool little supplement about fishing in the Morkborg world where you can catch some really unique uh, fish that might eat you. This book actually has a known problem that is commented on when you purchase this through DriveThruRPG saying that when you open it up, the text in the printed version is really close to the spine or as people refer to it as the gutter of the book. And you can kind of see it here because this uh, zine has off-colored pages. And you can see how close the text is to the very edge. And then when they bind this, you can kind of tell that this would be really close together. So with this type of a binding that we're going to do for this book or this zine, uh, we're going to be able to secure the pages further away from the edge of the printing. So that way, when we open up our book, the text will not be um, close to the gutter and should improve the quality of the zine. So we've already printed out the book. This is actually printed at 100%. So this is the actual size this zine is supposed to be. What's interesting about the way that I'm talking about making zines right now or an alternative way of binding books is you could adjust this and print it larger if you wanted to. You could have, I could have printed this at 110%. I could have filled the page and had a regular eight and a half by 11 version of this. It's kind of up to you if you want to make it larger. I kept it the regular zine size because I have a specific type of box that I keep all my zines in and this will fit. So what we need to do first is we need to mark along the edge exactly where we want to place our staples. We're not going to do this blindly. Uh, we want to staple this in a particular spot and we need to cut off some of the excess here. So we can take our ruler that we have. We can get some rough measurements of how much space we have. We have a little bit over an inch and a half here so basically I think I just want to cut an inch off and then I'd be able to staple right between here and it should be okay uh, and that would make it just fine so all I'm gonna do is make a mark with my pen whoops make sure you don't mess up your line just gonna make a mark here then I will draw out a line So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to my paper cutter and I'm going to cut this excess off. I'll be right back. 
So now that we've made the cut, it's I did a pretty good job cutting right along the line. As I've said in previous videos, I've got a very inexpensive guillotine paper cutter. I don't think it's square. I think it's off slightly. That's what happens when you buy inexpensive products. They're not always perfect. And I've, over time, have learned to adjust the best I can. So I did a pretty good job there. So we got this ready to go. We got a cut. We're going to put staples right along the back here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get our stapler. And we're going to make sure that when we staple, we're getting into the middle of that. We can adjust this stapler slightly. It doesn't have a lot of adjustment. If we want to get it closer, but because we know this particular PDF has a problem with the text being too close to the edge of the print, we're going to want to make sure that we go out a little bit further. That's why I left so much space there. So I think we're in a good spot there. Now, the way we're making these zines is we're using cardstock to wrap around to the back of the zine to cover the spine and make things look just a little bit better. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take a silver Sharpie because I'm using black cardstock. Mark off where the print is actually at. So that helps out. Get everything in place. We're going to trim off the rest of this. So if we're not 100% square, once we cut it, it's all going to get square real quick. I like to start with a staple in the middle. Make sure everything's good. And staple. It went through pretty good, but not 100%. If that's a bother to you, you can always take a hammer. But when we start putting this back into the paper cutter, it's going to crush those staples down. But that is up to you on what you want to do. I do not go all the way to the edge. Just go right there, staple it down, staple it down. So we've got three staples in the edge of our zine. Again, if this is a problem, you can easily just take a small hammer and hammer those down. Like I've got this, I'm at my, my craft desk. I've got this little anvil. I've got this small little hammer I keep. Like I could just hammer these down. I'm sure you're hearing that on the video now. That's up to you. You don't have to do that if you do not want to. But now that we've got this, what we can do is make our fold. Now what this is going to do, it's going to cover the spine of the, the zine. And we want to make sure the zine spine is covered. So do your best to go right along the print. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to be as nice as possible. Card stock, so just give it a nice fold. Get a fold going around the back of the spine. Wrap it around. There we go. Now what this is going to offer is the back of the book is going to have this cardstock cover. You can see where I made some other marks earlier. My video was terrible, uh, so I reshot that. The staples are covered, and that's why we're doing this spine is to, state, to cover the staples. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go get some Elmer's glue. I'm going to put a bunch of glue here to help cover the, the, the staple part. And I'm going to put a bunch of glue here. I am not going to put any glue really over this, uh, maybe on the very edge, but that's about it. I don't want to flood the back with a bunch of glue. Uh, if you wanted to, you could. It's simply up to you. Okay, so whenever you're dealing with Elmer's glue, make sure you have like a damp or wet towel easily accessible to you because if you get this on your hands and you start touching this cardstock 
you're going to leave like shiny marks and it's just not going to look attractive even though this is the back of the book we still want it to look pretty because everything should look pretty so we're just going to put elmer's glue along the side so just put some elmer's glue down rub it in with your finger you're playing with glue here just don't eat the glue don't be a glue eater so we get some glue down and then what we're going to do is we're going to go along the spine of the book sorry about the zoomed in look but i'm doing the best i can trying to get this on camera so go along the spine of the book if you want to hit a little bit on the back side you can you don't have to but definitely get glue on the spine clean your finger off that you use to rub the glue around with and then wrap your zine now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in my book vise so that the Elmer's glue can dry and then I'll, I'll come back to video, show you the end result, but you can kind of see where we're going with it. And I fixed the issue that this book has. I'm kind of holding it with my hands on the back simply because of the glue, but the text is away from the gutter now, so you can really read the text. Yes, you can see some white in there because of the way we found this book on these solid black pages um, but that's the price you pay i'd rather be able to read the text and see a little bit of white so we'll be back once this dries okay so the glue has dried and unfortunately i can't really show on my camera but you can see where the staples are because that elmer's glue under the pressure of my book vise or press really kind of sucked it in and you can see the outline of the staples which is a good sign um, but here it is the back of it like i said i didn't flood the back with glue just a little bit got over here which is fine and if we open up the book you can now see you know the gutters a lot better the text isn't going all the way to the gutters so it's really easy to read and we can fold the pages over if we wanted to because we made this book. So if we ruin it, we can make another one. Uh, one of the joys of making your own books is that I don't feel any guilt writing in these books. I could leave all of this extra paper here and just use that margins to write in if I wanted to. But we don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this to my paper cutter. And I'm going to cut along the uh, print to reduce the size down to a zine size. And that will finish this. And here's the finished book. So as you can tell, I left there's still a little bit of white going around the edge. But I got good straight cuts. And yeah, I could get super into trying to get it perfect. But then I'm going to start making more cuts and as you make more cuts you just take more risks and to be honest with you i'm quite happy with it if this bugs me maybe i'll, I'll find a yellow marker and i'll mark the edge with some yellow uh, a yellow marker and be done but that's fishborg fiskborg all bound together and we address the issues with the text being uh, too close to the gutter and it was a real easy book to bind for anybody like this is not super hard uh, to do it's you know if you don't have a paper cutter you can always do a ruler along the edge and use a razor blade and just make multiple cuts or you could cut all these out by hand with a pair of scissors and go that route but this is how i've been making zines lately i think it looks better and i am very happy with how this one turned out so i've got more to make so anyways thank you for watching the video and have a great day